you've got the common person, you've got a ruler, and then when you um, um, back up, look at verse 13, it says, and if the whole congregation of Israel sin through ignorance, and the thing be hid from the eyes of the assembly, and they have done somewhat against any of the commandments of the Lord concerning things which should not be done and are guilty. Now notice, notice my brothers and sisters, that you've got the whole congregation, you've got the leaders, and you've got the common people, you've got the ruler. Now, the, 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 the furtherest of extent, now this is talking about sin offerings, because it says, like, look at back to 20, verse 27, it says, verse 28, or if his sin which he have sinned come to his knowledge, then shall he bring his offering, a kid of the goats, a female without blemish, for his sin which he have sinned, and he shall lay his hands yeah it says and he shall lay his hands upon the head of the sin offering and slay the sin offering in the place of the burnt offering so therefore what happens is that you lay your hands on the offering and you slay it now you've got the common person as i said you've got the ruler you've got the congregation you understand so what i'm trying to say what's the what's the furthest extent that the sin offering covered What's what's the what's the what's the what's the largest percent of congregation. the congregation? Somebody's always switched on over there. Praise God. Now let me tell you something. So therefore, the sin offering only extended to the whole congregation. And if you want it to be part of the congregation, you have to be circumcised first. You know, you have to you have to be accepted into the congregation. You understand? So the sin offering was the furthest extent it could reach was for the whole congregation. It did not go out into Babylon or Egypt or, you know, they had to, they had to join in. They had to be part of the people. There were certain things, if you had a visitor, a stranger within your gate, there were certain of the ceremonies that you had to, um, you know, come into and attend whether you're Israelite or not. Now, when we contrast the sin offering in the worldly or earthly sanctuary, that's the extent of its influence. So therefore, when you look at prophecy in the Old Covenant, when, the, when a prophecy was made in the Old Covenant, like when Isaiah, I mean, um, Elijah told um, the, the king that, you know, you're going after the God of Ekron, Beelzebub. For that, you're going you're gonna to meet your end. Or when a prophecy was pronounced against uh, 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 the people, it only had a local, geographical, and literal boundary. Do you understand what I'm saying? Now, but the new covenant's different. The new covenant's different. Look at John chapter 1. I'll show you something why the new covenant's different. Now we're using the gospel of Christ as our alignment to work these things out. John chapter 1. Now look at verse um, 29 in John chapter 1. The Bible says here in John chapter 1, The next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. Notice that Christ's offering, it was for the extent that it could take away the sin of the world. Do you understand that? But in the old covenant, worldly, earthly sanctuary, it couldn't take away the sin of the world. It could only take the people that were literally geographically there. So therefore, the new covenant is also it's in your heart and mind, but it's spiritual. It's spiritual and it's also worldwide. Because Christ's sacrifice, although he died on the cross, we don't have to lay our hands on him literally and kill him. Spiritually, 
we killed him by our sins. And spiritually, when we repent, we say, Lord, my sin caused you to go on the cross. Because by, by, by providence, you know, God the Father had to lay every single sin that man would ever commit upon Jesus Christ on the cross. Because when you take your hand and place your hand on the sin offering, you're transferring your guilt, the guilty to the innocent. So that's why it was the weight of the sins of the world that crossed, crossed Christ and killed him. It wasn't the nails or the spear. It was the weight of man's sin. So God the Father had to look into the past, present and future at every single sin that was ever com committed for the whole world and laid him on Jesus Christ. Because he died for the sins of the whole world, whether the whole world accepts or not. So that's why it's called the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. Even though the Lamb was used in symbolism as, um, you know, pointing to Jesus Christ. Go to Matthew chapter 26. Matthew chapter 26. We're going we're gonna to enlarge upon this concept here. Matthew chapter 26. And um, the Bible says here. Verse 1 and 2, And it came to pass, when Jesus had finished all these sayings, he said unto his disciples, Ye know that after two days is the feast of the Passover, and the Son of Man is betrayed to be crucified. Now remember Passover. They all had to eat bitter herbs, and they all had to slay a lamb. And if they didn't wipe the blood on the doorpost... When the destroying angel um, passed by that house, he wouldn't pass over them. That's why it was called Passover, because the destroying angel would pass over. So it was pointing out to Christ, he would die for our sins, and he would put his blood upon the doorpost of our heart. And when the second death comes, if he sees our blood, his life on our heart, he will pass over us and not destroy us with the second death. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's what it means. And we could, we could elaborate that from, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 5. 1 Corinthians chapter 5. We could, we could, we could enlarge upon that. 1 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 7. The Bible says here, Purge out therefore the old leaven. Now that word leaven means yeast. And it's the yeast that makes the unleavened bread swell into a nice puffy loaf. But yeast in the Bible represents sin. So we have to, the, 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 the yeast in our life has to be purged out. So it says, purge out therefore the old leaven, that ye may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened. For even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. So Christ was our Passover. Now how does that relate to, pro relate to prophecy, Christ being our Passover? Because the Passover was the actual um, death of Christ dying on the cross. It was the actual keynote of the gospel Jesus Christ dying for our sins but we know that if Christ died and not raised up our faith is in vain because we won't have anybody in the sanctuary to plead our case you know the, the Sunday churches they said well Jesus Christ died for us he died for us listen if he never raised he couldn't take because remember what happened with the sanctuary service is that when when the animal was killed. He was killed outside in the outer court. And the, the, you had to cut the throat yourself. And the priest took the blood in the bowl and brought it into the sanctuary. So therefore, Christ had to take his blood into the sanctuary so that he could minister on our behalf by giving us the actual... Because, you know, when you actually con confess your sins, you're saying to the Lord, by faith I want when you cleanse the sanctuary for my sins to be cleansed. 
Now, last week we talked about the cleansing of the sanctuary, and at the same time the sanctuary is cleansed, your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, and therefore Christ cleanses your body and cleanses the sanctuary at the same time. So it's important to know that. Now, look at Col um, Colossians now, and we're looking at the concept of um, how this relates to the gospel and prophecy. Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1. You know, the Bible says here in Colossians chapter 1, look at verse 21. And you that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now have he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight now listen to this now this is the key text if ye continue in the faith grounded and settled and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel which ye have heard and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven wherefore i paul am made a minister now the bible is saying that the gospel was preached to every creature yeah which is under heaven now it's not talking about every member of creation but it's talking about every human being heard the gospel so what that's telling us is that the gospel of christ's death it went worldwide you understand so therefore very important to listen to this therefore brethren what I'm trying to say is that Christ's death on the cross Christ's death on the cross yeah it was to be um, partaked for everybody around the world so what happens if you accept Christ's death on the cross what happens when you accept Christ's death on the cross what happens when we repent okay what do you become when you repent a new creature look at Galatians now let's look at Galatians go to the book of Galatians chapter 3 yeah I'll show you a few texts here Galatians chapter 3 and look at verse 16 I believe it says now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made he saith not and to seeds as of many but as of one and to thy seed which is Christ so there's one seed of Abraham which is what Christ and the promises were made to the seed of Abraham so therefore God told Abraham, I'm going to make you, an, uh, uh, you know, a father of a nation. Look to the left, look to the right. And as far as you could see the stars of heaven, that's going to be the extent of your kingdom. And then the Bible tells us to Abraham's seed where the promise is made. And that the seed of Abraham is Christ. But look at verse, stay in Galatians 3. Look at verse 28. The Bible says there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor free male, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Now Abraham was the father of what nation? Jewish nation. Okay, Israel, amen. I was waiting for somebody to say that. Because through Abraham, you had Jacob. And then Jacob became Israel. So what I'm trying to say, brothers and sisters, is that in the new covenant, 